Hello and welcome to the Advanced InDesign tutorial. Today we're going to talk about books. If you have your master or bachelor thesis and you have like 200 pages, it might be a good idea to use several documents and group them together in one book inside InDesign. Setting the book function in InDesign up might be a little bit difficult in the beginning, but you only need to do it once and I will guide you to the whole process. So after this, it's really easy to use InDesign with the book function. It's basically the same way like using InDesign in the normal way. However, there can be some problems with hyperlinks. So if you link from your text to one of your pictures, for example. So I would advise you if you want to write your thesis as a book in InDesign, if you know you have a lot of pages, start your book directly. Don't write your thesis on one document and then divide it into documents like we do in this tutorial today because it might mess up some of your cross-references. Okay, now we can get started with the tutorial. We have been working on the InDesign document for quite some time now and if you didn't follow the last tutorials so you don't have this document, you can simply download all these documents on my website. You find the link in the YouTube description. Otherwise, we can continue with our document and we see we have a lot of pages in here. So today we're going to try and divide all the chapters into different InDesign documents. This will make InDesign quicker and it also makes it easier to navigate in your documents. So if you imagine we would have 200 pages, it would be quite tedious to navigate to all the pages to do edits in here. We start by going to File and going to Create a new book. Let's call this one thesis and you just click on save. And now you get for your thesis, this is how the book is called, this little window. If you look in our folder, we now get this book here and we know it's a book because it has a B in the end instead of a D for InDesign document. This is an InDesign book. Let's also highlight this one. And what we need to do now is we need to add to this book different InDesign documents. For example, this one. To do this, we can click on the plus button and just select the book temp document. This now contains all our pages. So what we need to do next is to divide this document into different single documents. Therefore, we're going to create a new InDesign document. And InDesign will let us sync everything from our template here all the styles and master pages and so on to our new book chapters. The only thing that can't be synced are the page margins. So this box you see here, we need to figure out how big our margins are and we can do this on the layout, margins and columns. And you actually just write down the values you see here. You can click on cancel and we're going to create our new document. We don't want to have facing pages and we're going to set the margins this as the same as in our document here. And then we need two pages. You can click on OK. Let's move this to the side for the moment. And you see it has the same margins as our original document. The thing we need to do in here now is to create the text frame that contains our text. So we need to set it up that it will add text frames and pages automatically. So you first drag one text frame and we're going to copy this one for the other page. And then we can type some, some stuff in here. And under type, you can make show hidden characters activated to see actually what you are and where you are typing. And to get the smart text we flow activated. So if we would have a lot of text in here, let me just copy this one, that you get the plus sign down here that it would add pages and let the text flow from here to the next page. We need to activate this again and we can do this in the preferences under type and just click on Smart Text Reflow and on OK. And then you can take this plus sign and put it to the next page. And if we now would go over this page with our text, it will add new pages 
as well. Like this. We can now save this template here. Let's call this one book page temp and we can click on save. To make our life easier right now, we're actually going to add this one to the book already. Even if it's just a template, we're going to add this one and we sync the styles from our book temp, from our original document that contains all our paragraph styles and master pages and so on. We're going to sync this one to the book temp document. And then we're going to copy this template a few times in our folder and make this one our different chapters. This is our template right here. If you want to sync something, you need to make sure that you choose the right sync options and you find those under synchronize options. And you want to make sure to have everything in here selected, also the master pages. You can click on OK. And actually we're going to save our book right now. It's always a good idea to save it in between while working. And now we see this one is our style source. It's indicated by this symbol over here. And if you click on this button, it will sync the styles from here to our new pages of the book. We click this button, it will take some time. And it tells us it has successfully synced the parts. So if we look in here at our paragraph styles, for example, we will find the same thing in here now as well. We actually can apply this one. This is our basic text. And you see it gets formatted as always. And it also did sync the master pages. So the standard master page is automatically applied in here. We have here our master pages. Now we're going to save this document again, our template. We can close this and we're going to copy it a few times to use it as a template for our different chapters in our thesis. Let's first create a new folder. Let's call it thesis chapter. And now we're going to duplicate our template and place it in here. We change the color. And of course, we need to change the name as well. We're going to repeat this for the other chapters. This would be the typical chapters in our thesis. And I'm going to add those to our thesis book. We can remove our template in here. And we're going to add the different chapters of our thesis. Click on open. And now it has added the chapters in here. If you want to open one, we can just double click and it will open the document indicated by this symbol that it's open. We can open some more. Let's close this one again. And now it's time to get the introduction from here into our actual introduction. So we're going to select the introduction. Actually, let's use this one to navigate here. It ends on page four. By pressing shift and clicking here, we select the whole text. Then we go on cut. And we can press in here Command A to select the whole text and press Command V to paste it. And now we have our introduction in here. Let's save this one and continue the same way for the other chapters of the book. Let's open material and methods. We go back to our first document and in here we need to copy material and methods. Let's place the cursor on the start and it should end over here. And we press again the shift key and click to select all the text. Let's cut it. And we move to material and methods, click 
select all of the text and paste it again. Let's save this one. And it always takes some time to calculate all the changes, so it's a little bit slow in the beginning because it needs to copy a lot of text. But the thing you see now here is it doesn't get the numbering right. And this is something we need to take care of later. We're first going to copy all the parts into the different chapters. Alright, now we have sorted all parts of our document into different chapters and they are organized in separate InDesign documents. These are the documents you see here and they are all linked in this main thesis book document. At the moment we still have our original document that still contains some information and I would like to move this one into here as well. The easiest way to do this is just to take this file and choose save as and we're going to save it in here as zero front. Now it's telling us it has a problem here. To fix this we're just going to remove this one and we're going to add our front in here. We put it on top and now it should be fine again. This should also be our style source. You can change the style source just by clicking and we're going to save the book. Let's take a look in our folder again. We can get rid of our original book temp, can move it to trash. And I just want to remember you, you should never move this document because then it would lose the link to our thesis, to our book document. So this would confuse InDesign. So the best thing is to not move those things around and don't change the names. If you change the names, you can always add them in here again, but it's easier to just keep those things as they are. Now we should take care of the numbering problem. If we go to, for example, material and methods, we see here this starts with the number one and this shouldn't be the case. This isn't right. So to fix this, let's go to front into the paragraph style menu and in the headlines, we can go on edit and under bullets and numbering, we see the list is default. This wasn't a good idea to assign the default list, so we're going to create a new one. Let's call this one headline numbering and make sure that it has activated continuous numbers across stories and also from previous document in book. We can click on OK and on OK again. And now we need to select this numbering in every paragraph style that we use as a headline, also in the subheadlines. So you just go around and select headline num, also for head 3, and we're going to save this. This however is now only applied in front and we need to apply this change style to all the other documents. So we're going to select them and we press the synchronize button and as this is our style source, so where we have done the changes in the paragraph style, we're going to sync those changes to all our documents. We press this button, it will take some time. All right, this should be it. So we can take a look. This one is starting with one, as it should be. Then we have the introduction, and if we go to materials and methods, we see, oh, it's still one. So there's another thing you need to do, and this is update the numbering. The easiest thing is just to update all numbers. You can click on update. And now we have the right numbering in here. So it's not updated automatically. Every time you add a headline, you need to update it with update numbering. The same thing will also affect the figure numbering and also your cross references. So you need to make sure to update those things on a regular basis. So before you print your document, it's a good idea to update all those things. 
The only thing that is updated on the fly is the page numbering. Let's save these two documents and we're also going to save the changes we done in our book. And I would now say we close all of this and we're going to see this in action. If you want to edit your chapters in your book, you shouldn't edit them directly in here. You should always open your book document first and then open your documents by double clicking in here because otherwise InDesign will get confused. There was some problem with the hyperlinks. You might have the same problem as I had. Unfortunately, I did record it with the wrong microphone, so I need to record it now again. And now I already have this fixed in here. So if you have some symbols here and you can't fix your links, you just need to delete them and place them again. I don't know why this happened. So in the worst case, you would need to set all your hyperlinks again. So the best idea for books is to create your chapters and then create your hyperlinks on the go while you're writing. So dividing your whole thesis after you have written them into a book might not be the best idea. Anyway, let's see how we get some hyperlinks in here. So if you want to reference to a figure, let's open the discussion page, for example. If I assume I want to create a hyperlink that points to figure seven, and I want to put this in the material methods, I can go to my text at some point, zoom in, and I start by creating a bracket. And I know my figure seven is in the discussion chapter. And to create those hyperlinks, I have to have both chapters open. You see with the symbol here that the chapter is open. I'm going to create a new cross reference. And in here, I choose the chapter's discussion. This document here, select figure numbering. And I only want to include the paragraph number. So you see now it's figure six. We want to link to figure seven. And we can click on OK. However, if I now would go ahead and delete this figure here, going to save this, this would change the numbering on all following pages. So if we look now at this page, this is still seven, but I deleted a figure before, so it would be reduced to six. To update those things, we need to go to update all numbers. And now we see it's changed to six. If I now want to update all my hyperlinks, I can select all documents and I choose update all cross references. And it says, well, it's updated now. Can click on OK. Let's save those two things. The last thing we need to take care of now is our table of contents. So we open the front page and we have here our table. Normally you would place your cursor inside your table of contents and then go on layout, update table of contents. However, now it get rid of all the references here. So to fix this, we need to change something in our table of contents styles. We are using this one at the moment. If we go on edit, we need to select include book documents. We click on okay. And if we try it now again, it should update the whole table of contents and should include all headlines. This looks all right. We can save this one. And finally, we might want to export this as a PDF. So we select all our chapters, go on here, export book to PDF. We choose a location where we want to save it. Click on save. And in here you do your settings, how you like them. Go on export. This might take some time. And here we have our nice document. Let's see if the links in the table of contents are working. Yep, this looks all right. 
Then I would say we test the hyperlinks. Can click, for example, on figure six. And it takes us to figure six. All right, and there we have our nice book. Let me give you some tips in the end of this video. If you have a document that is going to be above 100 pages, make sure to use the book function. It will make it a lot easier in the end. And also, if you have your book layouted, check again if all pictures are in the right place, because as we divided our document into several parts, it might mess up the layout of some pictures. I need to admit, it's a little bit difficult to set all the things up. I was struggling with this video to make this, but once you have set it up, it's really easy to work with it. So I would really advise to use the book function and I wish you good luck with this. So see you in the next tutorial. Bye bye.